Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the class. So for this week, we are going to read the novel Last Caution and also watch the movie Last Caution, which is an adaptation of the same novel. We won't have any synchronized session for this week, but we will have a、um, synchronized discussion next week, next Thursday, to thoroughly discuss both the novel and the movie. So the title of the book and the movie is Last Caution. And this is a screenshot of the movie. And if you still remember last unit, we read a lot of novels and watch a movie, which is all about sensual love. So basically, how sensory experience is represented in works like、uh, novels and movies, and we saw a lot of interactions between the characters, like how they looking at each other. How they touch upon each other or resisted the attempt to touch upon each other, like the oil peddler,、uh, his treatment to the queen of flower, and also how gossip, so listening,、uh, in the mood, in the in the mood,、uh, in the movie, in the mood for love, how the gossip, listen or listening to gossip, shape the character's idea about love and relationships. So basically, senses and sensory experience is very important in all those works. And now we are moving on to a new unit, which is love and warfare. So basically, we are going to see how individual respond to the historical event of war, and how war shaped our idea about love, and how one person's responsibility for the country is in contrast with his own. Um, emotional choices, and basically how love is going to happen in a time of at the time of war. And this specific work, Last Caution, is a perfect bridge between Unit One and Unit Two, because first, this work is written in a huge historical background of the Sino-Japanese War, and we are going to see two characters from the two parties of the war falling in love. But we, what kind of love we can、uh, we need to have a discussion? But basically, they they are falling in love, and also they have some struggles, and leading to a interesting ending. I won't spoil it here, but、uh, basically we're going to see how private emotion or private love is shaped by the、uh, historical war. And also, this kind of love is depicted very sensually in both the novel and the movie. Especially in the movie, if you go watch it, you will see、uh, a very explicit display of sex on the screen. So basically, correspond to the、um, title "Lust," and how love. Uh, what's the relationship between love and sex, and how、uh, through sex the characters understand their love better or worse? All these will be interesting questions we need to discuss later. So before we moving on to the specific work, I want to give you a blueprint of what we are going to see in this unit, love and warfare. So first, we are going to see this、uh, novel and movie, Last Caution, Se Jie. And the next next week, we are going to see another short novel, Love in a Fallen City. And both of these、um, novels are written by a female writer, Elin Chen. Who lived from 1920 to 1995? So a modern female writer. And both of、uh, both works are fictions, even if they may have some historical roots, but they are、uh, overall the recreation or the creation of this female writer Elin Chen. And、um, the historical background of these two novel. Are the、uh, Sino-Japanese War, which happened between、um, 1937 to 1945, and the geographical location of the two stories are again Hong Kong and、uh, Shanghai. If you still remember, in the first movie we saw in the mo- Mood for Love,、um, they、uh, these two cities, these two metropolitan cities, are also very important geographical location. Uh, the whole story in the mood for love is happening in Hong Kong, but the landlord, if you still remember, she is a immigrant from Shanghai. So these two cities are just so important in that time, 
and are represented again and again in love stories. Uh, when setting a in a time of the 1920s, 30s, 40s. Okay. And later we are going to see another kind of work, Reminiscence of the Punk Shadow, is written by a male writer, Mao Xiang. Uh, so we are jumping backward a little bit. Mao Xiang is a literatus living from 16, uh, 1611 to 1693. And this work even if it's very story-like, it tells a story, but it's not a fiction because Mao Xiang is writing about his relationship with his concubine. So um, his concubine is dead and he is now writing something in memory of, her con of his concubine. So basically it's a memory writing. And the historical background is a Manchu invasion happened in 1944. So basically, um, the Manchu from the northern part of China is now invading the southern part of China and eventually taking over the whole China and uh, to establish the new Qing dynasty. So Mao Xiang is a person who lived as a transition of the dynasties. The geographical location for this work for reminiscence of the Plum Shadow is the Jiangnan region. So the red circle that places including cities like Nanjing, Hangzhou, Changzhou, Taizhou. So that's very interesting if we um, like take a overall look at this unit because we are going to see like both gender, like the, a female writer and a male writer, how they respond to the idea of love in the time of warfare and how both fictional writing and the realistic writing, if you can say so, like a memory writing, respond to this specific theme and how different type of war, a, a war in the pre-modern time and a war in the modern time, how uh, our relationships is shaped by the war and how the, the pre-modern war and the modern war differs in the way of shaping people's idea about love relationships. So that's very interesting and everything we need to cover for this unit. And uh, when talking about love and warfare, there are several interesting points we need to think about. So, for example, how do individuals view, uh, how do individuals view and manage love relationships in the time of warfare? Especially, what kind of difficulties are they facing? What kind of benefit are they enjoying? So, is war an obstacle or an accelerator? to a love relationship. If you're thinking about war, that's a very difficult time people are suffering, you may like naturally go direct to war as an obstacle for love relationships. But that may not always be true, especially when you read all these stories. You will get a very complicated image of how war influenced the idea about love. So I think this question is one of the most interesting one. So is war an obstacle or a accelerator? And also, how do they balance interests between private and public? So their um, responsibility for the country or their private kind of emotions to, the civic, to their significant others. So how to balance these two interests, these two relationships? And if we um, speak at a conceptual level, we can say, uh, how can individual stories be woven into the ground narrative? If we're always thinking about the love, uh, a love story as an individual story and the warfare as a ground narrative, how these two come together? And uh, is, there one, uh, is there always one uh, dominate the other? Or sometimes the relationship can be different. And finally, does gender, like the gender of the authors, gender of the characters, gender of us readers matter in understanding a, lo a wartime love relationship and how? I think that's very interesting because thinking about we're going to read some female writers and male writers um, a writing and also you'll see a very different kind of way of writing, a very different perspective they portrayed 
their characters in the stories. So the gender, the issue of gender, is very in interesting and important, especially for this unit. And now let's turn to the specific story. Uh, last caution. So this is uh, this story is written by Ellen Chen, Zhang Ailing, and this is a picture of her. So you will see she is not considered a typical beautiful woman at that time. She's pretty, but not the most beautiful ones. But from this picture, you will see she is one of the person, one one kind of person who is very proud of her own talent. She's very confident in writing, and she knows she can make a living by writing. She has so a total confidence in that, and is very good at manipulating um the 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 language to express what he wants. So, uh, we are going to read two novels of her, and you will gradually see how her style is very suitable in depicting especially love stories. So basically, she is born in Shanghai with an aristocratic lineage. And then she went to college in Hong Kong. So Shanghai and Hong Kong, if you still remember these two metropolitan cities that is so important at that time, and also in Zhang Ailing's personal experience. That is why she constantly writing about stories happening in these two cities. And she is considered a realist and a modernist writer. And she um, is famous for creating an alternative wartime narrative, one that deviated from the ground accounts of national salvation and revolution. So that is why I, I will say, um, even if writing about something in the historical background of the war, she was always focusing on personal emotions, on love and how individual response to love. So all this kind of alternative narrative. And she is very good at displaying modern colors, lines, shapes, textures, and mood. And actually, um, Zhang Ailing herself, Ailin Chen, is a lover for fashion. So she will very much pay attention to how the character is uh, wearing. So what kind of clothes they are wearing, or what kind of taste they are showing by uh, drinking certain kind of tea or um, wearing certain kind of um, clothes from certain uh, department store. So all these kind of modern fashion is her interest. And one more interesting anecdote is that she has a very complicated romantic relationship with Hu Lanchen, a writer and a, polit a politician who was denounced as a traitor for serving the Japanese puppet regime. This specific personal experience may have influenced her writing about Last Caution, and we are going to discuss that a little bit later. Now let's turn to the novel Last Caution. And the first thing we need to pay attention to is the title Se Jie. So there are two characters, Se and Jie. And they have actually very different meanings, two layers of different meanings. So the first character, Se, can mean both color or lust. And the second character, Jie, can mean ring or abstain from or being cautious about something. So if we put the two characters together, it can have two different meanings. It can mean colorful ring or last caution. So last caution is um, talking about Se Jie in a more conceptual level, and it is chosen by the English translator as the English translation for this title. But colorful ring may be a more kind of um, basic meaning or literal meaning of this title. And if you read the story and watch the movie, you'll see that colorful ring is one of the most important trope in the whole story, or the most important material existence of the whole story. So uh, that's very interesting. The title can be read both ways. And uh, very interestingly, even if this story is not long, it took Ellen Chang more than two decades to complete. So she just um, continued to 
revise the story again and again. That is why when we read the story, sometimes we will feel like、um, it's not very fluent in the way of the stream of thinking. It will cut off at some point and、uh, go into a very unexpected direction. And I will blame all these to the constant revising of Ellen Chan to、uh, again and again revise and complicate the whole story. That is why I said Ellen Chan's personal experience may have some influence on this specific story, because according to David Derwey Wong, who is a professor from Harvard University,、um, he claimed that this novella. Draw controversy thanks to a biographical sub sub、uh, subtext. It seems to project Chang's own wartime experience as a collaborator's lover, because Ellen Chang herself has such a romantic relationship with Hu Lancheng, who is a collaborator of the puppet regime. She will have a very complicated、um, emotional response to this story in the last caution. To the relationship between the two characters, so that kind of subtext is very interesting and may help us understand why this story is came out to be like this. And a little bit about the Second Sino-Japanese War. So this war is happening in line with the World War Two. So when the Nazi Germany is、uh, fighting against、uh, Soviet Union and the United States. In Asia, Japan is fighting against China and other countries. So basically, Japan invaded China, and Japan kind of、um, established a puppet regime in China led by Wang Jingwei. So we will、um, saw some discussion about the Wang regime or the Wang government, which is supposedly a Japanese puppet regime. And、uh, this regime has a lot of collaborators. The Mister E, the male characters in our story, is one of them. And also, there are some anti-Japanese forces like the KMT Kuomintang and the Chinese Communist Party (CCP). So we'll see some a lot of like student rational groups, so student movement, anti-Japanese movement happening at that time. And they, all those student group will have or is inclined to have some supporters from these two anti-Japanese forces. And our male, ah,、uh, female character Wang Jiazhi is from one of the student radical, a、uh, radical group. And Mr. Wu is their supporter, who is from KMT. So that is how um the relationship is formed. Uh, in the historical background of the Sino-Japanese War, and interestingly, this story is based on a real historical event. So, um, basically, um, the historical event is Zheng Pingru's failed attempt to assassinate Ding Muochun. So, he here are the two pictures of the two historical figure. Uh, the one above is Zheng Pingru, the female character. Uh, the uh the Equivalent of our female character, and the bottom is Ding Muochun, the equivalent of our male character. So some differences from this historical event, uh, between this this historical event and that story is that first, um, the real, uh, historical figure Zheng Pingru is not a student who is nobody, but a celebrity. She even appears in、uh, Liang Yu, which is a very famous fashion magazine at that time. So she is a celebrity, and she has a a lot of in,、uh, relationships with people from the Japanese government. And actually, she is an underground KMT spy. So she joined the party, not like our female character Wang Jiazhi, who stayed away or sort of have a. Complicated, not so direct relationship with the、uh, um anti-Japanese forces, but Zheng Pingru is a、uh, very clearly be- become a underground KMT spy. And one more detail, very interesting, is a place of assassination. So in the story and in the movie, 
that it happened、um, in a jewelry store when they are trying to buy a diamond ring. But in this historical event, that is not a jewelry store but a fur company when Zheng Pingru proposed to buy a fur coat, and、uh, eventually the fail the failure is the same, but the location is different. I think that's very interesting how Zhang Ailing tried to replace the fur coat with a diamond ring, and how diamond or why diamond is so important in Zhang Ailing's idea, uh, when portraying a love relationship. And、uh, more about Lost Caution as a movie. So this movie is directed by Ang Lee. If you、uh, if you took my class last semester, you must have watched the movie、um, "Eat, Drink, Man, Woman," also directed by the same director An Li. So you will see An Li is kind of、uh, that kind of director who are very sensitive about human relationships,、um, not only in families but more importantly individual to individual, and uh, also uh, the sexual relationships between man and woman. It's always his、uh, most interesting, one of his most interested topic, and the cast is、um, uh, Tang Wei as Wang Jiazhi or Miss, Mrs. Mai, and Tony Liang as、uh, Mr. E. So if you still remember, this same Tony Liang played、uh, Chou Mo Wan in、um, the first movie we saw in the Mood for Love. So I will. I I may ask this question: Why、uh, or how or、uh, how do you think about these two castings? Do they think、uh, do you think they are fitting into their own roles, or、uh, why this director choose these two actors to be the casting of this specific story? And this movie is actually get very positive feedback internationally. So it won on two thousand and seven Golden Lion International Venice Film Festival Award, but it also has a lot of controversies. The most important one being the three episodes of graphic sex with full frontal nudity. So it's pretty shocking at that time to have that many nude scenes in a Chinese、uh, language based movie. So、uh, all those scenes have been censored. When the movie is shot in China, and we'll have other kind of criticism as well, but、um, I think that's a very interesting choice for Ang Lee to put all these three episodes of sex scenes into the movie, and、uh, it's definitely worth discussing. So I want to pose some questions for you to think about when、um, watching this movie and reading the novel. The first one is. From whose perspective is the story told, and why is that important? Also, from written to visual languages, what changes and what remains? And、uh, basically,、um, the following question will be how to understand the added details, like the mirrors repeatedly、uh, appears in the movie, and、uh, Wang Jiazhi's、uh, Changsun. The qi pao. So how is that important? And the, especially the three episodes of sex. Why An Li tried to uh intended to uh express through uh what An Li intended to express through these three episodes of sex, and why he chose to put them into this movie and make it this long, and other details as well. Also, how do you think about the casting? Do you think they fit in the characters? Do you think these two actors are your imagined、uh, Wang Jiazhi and、uh, Mr. E when you're reading the novel? And、uh, how do you understand An Li's style, especially in comparison with Wang Gaowai? Because if you're thinking about、um, the focusing on the two metropolitan cities, Shanghai and、uh, Hong Kong. Wang Gaowai actually has a lot of in common with、uh, the original author Elin Chan. They are both focusing on the very detailed love relationships between individuals, and、uh, very good at to create a mood that in mood of love, that kind of、um, romantic mood between two characters. 
using written language or using visual language. But if Ang Li instead of Wang Ka Wai is shooting this specific film, what changes and uh, what Ang Li does better and what do you think if the director is Wang Ka Wai, he will do better? That's about it. I really hope you enjoy the novel and the movie. And don't forget to leave a comments down below and leave any thoughts of uh, the movie or the novel on the Moodle page, uh, the Moodle discussion I created. Let's have an interesting discussion next Thursday and see you in class. Bye.